What's up everybody? Welcome to From the Archive, the series in which I'm going to go through my personal stash and archive of books, whether it's wargame related or not, and pick one and share it with you all, like talk about it, things of that nature. Over the years of being, you know, a nerd and into this hobby and whatnot, I have a massive collection of books and for one reason or another um, I tend to keep them and whether or not I even really enjoy them, I just tend to keep them because I, I like physical, tangible books on stuff. And a lot of these books, pretty much all these books you're looking at here in one way or another, has helped shape my personal tastes, thoughts, and ideas when it comes to collecting miniatures uh, in this wargaming hobby, maybe as direct inspiration or just something in the back of my mind. So I thought it would be cool as I uh, unpack these things to share them with you. So what I'm going to do in each ramble, I'm going to pick one book kind of haphazardly and I'm gonna go sit down at the table with you and we're gonna look through it I'm gonna give a basic thought synopsis on it share my uh, opinions on it break it down a little bit maybe look inside of it a little and just talk about it whether it's a novel a codex or a tabletop RPG book or whatever so um, some of these books I have multiples of for some reason not really sure why other books I do not and it's just gonna be some fun I thought it would be cool to kind of get some insight, perhaps, and share my thoughts on stuff that I have in my little, small little personal collection here, and uh, for you all to share your thoughts as well on what, what I'm looking at uh, when it comes to the book in question, what you have, do you have the same book, what are your thoughts on it, and things like that. So this should be a lot of fun. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab one of these books, and I'll meet you at the table. Welcome back to the table with some glare and welcome to season three of From the Archive. These are a lot of fun to do. It's fun to root around my stuff and look at things that I've had for years and just gush on it. It's a fun time. Uh, so let's get to it with season three. Season three is going to continue what season two kind of uh, improved upon, basically. And by that I mean I'm not going to just limit it to books. It will be basically anything that I feel... Uh, related to some form of nerddom, if you will. But the layout will be the same. Ten episodes, one episode will be 40k related, then the very next episode will be something non-40k, something potentially random or whatever, then back to 40k, then something non-40k, and so on. So that's the kind of uh, the formula, if you will. I'm also going to be a bit more organic with it, so normally I check up on the time as it goes through because I, I try not to take forever on things but some of the stuff is special or just warrants it so if it happens to go a little long it goes a little long whatever with that said let's dive right into it with this first episode of from the archive for season three checking out a book from 2002 that is I guess in legal page format or whatever it's definitely bigger than a normal book this is, uh, or normal 8.5 by 11, anyway. This is the Insignum Astartes, the Uniforms and Regalia of the Space Marines. So, that is um, cool. I got this book basically back um, a couple years after it came out. So I've had this book myself for at least, I would say, 16 years. And it has been around since 2002, right? So it's an old book. Not super old, but it showcases things such, such as Second Company in yellow as opposed to the gold and whatever else. It's art. It's, there are some pictures, but it's mostly art-based. And it does use the Ultramarines as a big portion of its showcase. So we have a nice little art there. And we have a little bit of a content set up. So we have the introduction, what Space Friends are all about. This is a long page. Uh, squad variations, badge variants, officers, vehicles, other codex chapters, honor badges, and uh, field signs, whatever else. It really is a nice resource. Now, I'm not saying that if you're a Space Marine fan, you need to go buy this book. Finding it can be difficult outside of um, eBay and other online sites, and it's probably not going to be cheap, just because they tend to mark things up, which is why I'm going to go through it and take a little more time with this one. But you have your basic lore and stuff on gene seed, recruitment, the armor, 
and um, the bolt gun and everything else. Uh, for the most part, everything is pretty much as we expect. This is pre primaris obviously, so nothing with that. This is the bulk of what the art looks like. It's not the most detailed in terms of coloration, but that's fine. It's not bad. It gets the point across. Um, we see stuff about Space Marine chapter icons and talking about Space Marine chapters in general and the Codex Astartes, things you would expect. Chapter organization, we see the breakdown of the old chapter organization pre-Primaris and everything else. And um, then we start jumping right into it using the Ultramarines again as the example. So here we have Codex Chapter Squad Badges for first company, Terminators and Power Armor. Then we have second company and third company. As you expect, color variation being the big difference between the companies. But they do go through all of the companies plus their banners and some things to take note of. Just pretty cool. So we have some a little bit of lore, especially if you're an Ultramarine fan here. So we have 4th Company, Uriel Ventress comes from 4th Company. We have 5th Company, which has the black trim. And then of course we have 6th and 7th Reserves, 8th and 9th, and then Scouts, plus the Chapter Banner. So pretty standard stuff so far, but again, it just kind of showcases things for you. It spells it out, like I said, it's going over the uniforms and regalia of, in this case, the Ultramarines Chapter as the example. So there's a tactical squad from second company showcasing sergeant, veteran sergeant, or veteran. Uh, here's an assault squad, again second company, same concept, showcasing things, showcasing some weapons, which they do. Uh, showcase some of the heavy weapons down here too in art form again. Then we move to the Devastator squad. Pretty self-explanatory stuff if you know what you're looking at. In this case, we got two last cannons and two heavy bolters, so a nice mix there. This is a command squad from Second Company. Notice the veteran helmets and then the veteran sergeant. And here we have a veteran squad from First Company, the white shoulder pads and whatever else and the markings. We see a Terminator squad because that's cool. Terminator squads are always cool. And here we have scouts. And again, it's not the most detailed art, I get that, but it's just, it's more so there as a reference, okay? This is where the color gets put down and whatever else. Here we have some examples of some camouflage that scouts might use. Here we have badge variations, some variants on, um, I guess, uh, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The badges and stuff used for different companies, whatever else. Uh, just what I think is pretty cool about this is if you're good at freehanding especially, you could try your hand at doing some of these if you just want to vary it up a little bit. Yes, this is predominantly ultramarine centric, but it's not purely ultramarine. You'll see as we go on. Some more badge variations going down, which again, I think is cool and refreshing, especially if you want to try your hand at some of this if you're an ultramarine player or whatever else. So here we have more chapter badge variants, plus some of other chapters, which is pretty, pretty neat. And then we have some codex and box art stuff going on here. Here we have the captains. So we see third company, second company, and fifth company captain. They're not called out by name here, though we have typical Ultramarines names down here, which is pretty neat. We see different variations on kind of their heraldry or whatever else to go down with and just have some fun with to further uh, enhance your captain's look. Nothing crazy. Two dudes with bolt pistols and a power fist and then a plasma pistol with a chainsaw, but obviously you equip them however you would equip them. We see some other markings and the like and some uh, captain banners here that could be on their back. Chaplains, pretty straightforward. I just like that they showcase that. Um, here we have a, I believe this is the uh, Genesis. Yeah, Genesis chapter apothecaries. We get to see variation on the apothecary here, not just all white, but white backpack and shoulder pad with the red of the chapter's uh, color scheme. We get librarians from the Ultramarines and the Imperial Fists. So again, you get to see it. And um, more 
Tech Marines. Different chapters here again. So just based on the art and some of the weapon designs, you can tell it's a little bit older than what we see librarians and stuff designed like now. But they also go through bikes because they really want you to have an idea of how a codex chapter does their markings and everything. So we have the bike, the land speeder, their riders slash pilots. We have the dreadnought. It's a pretty cool dreadnought of third company. We have uh, Rhino and Razorback concepts. We have the Land Raider and Predator. Here's an actual picture of a Predator model. The first model picture I believe we've seen. This is, I believe, the old box art for the Land Raider. And then we have, um, which is interesting, it's got like, some type of tarp up there. We have the, the Land Raider itself showcasing some variations and how you could do such as the symbol and, and wording on there. More box art, such as the Landspeeder box art showcasing the actual models as they do. And now we're going into Codex chapters. I know I'm not really zooming in. There's not much to really zoom in on and see. What you're seeing is what you're seeing. Now, obviously, Iron Snakes, I believe this is their attempt at showcasing metallic. They don't really do metallic very well in this palette style. Although, I mean, the bolt guns very much clearly have metallic stuff going on. So maybe the old... Um, Iron Snake's coloration wasn't quite metallic, I don't know. I'm just saying that some of the colors aren't a true one-to-one -one interpretation. We have the Mentors chapter, we have the Marauders and the Raptors. So this is post-Raptors color scheme change. They're not blue with yellow, they are the green. Which is uh, helping narrow down exactly when that happened. So, good to know. We have the um, Iron Lords. So we didn't really get to see much of them in the Codex until like 5th edition or so, but they've been around since before that. The Emperor's Warbringers. Interesting coloration there. Bullet of a Thousand. They've been around for a bit. Here we get to see half color scheme of the Black Wings. And these are all Codex compliant chapters. So nothing that I've seen here is something from um, Blood Angels, Space Wolves, or Dark Angels stuff. Space Wolves aren't Codex compliant at all. Dark Angels and the Unforgiven, minorly so. Same thing with the Blood Angels and the other stuff seems to be here. I wanted to bring attention back to the Red Templars and other, I believe these are a bike heavy chapter too. Knights Griffin. The Warmongers, quartered green and blue. That's quite the color choice there. Quartered red and blue with yellow and their things for the Warrior Depths. Shoulder pads. I didn't mean to say things, I just forgot the word for a second. We have War Bearers, a Dark Hand, uh, Imperial Harbingers. I'm trying to call out some of the ones you don't get to see a lot of. The Imperial Castellans down here. So they actually busted out a good number of chapters to showcase color scheme wise. So if you just want to do an official one, you got a good look at a, a nice um, blending of different Codex compliant chapters. We have, of course, the Raven Guard and the Crimson Fist. There's Genesis again. There's your black and white consoles. Brazen Claws and Iron Hands uh, successor. The Dark Eagles down here, and so on. Oh, let's see here. Uh, Red Wolves and the Exorcists are in here as well, so that's kind of cool. The Exorcist being in there red coloration which is a color scheme change from their original so that's good to see uh some of these chapters you don't really get a look at much at all so it's nice to see some of the more obscure ones in here now we have honor badges a little bit of lore about them and what they represent here we get a, a thing about the service studs and uh other things like tattoos that you could apply if you're really good at freehanding on faces so that's cool a little lore information down there Army badges and field signs are being parts of particular battles and whatever else. So if you and a buddy, let's say, both collect Space Marines and let's say you both participate in a campaign, or you want to signify that your chapter that you're collecting and their chapter are fought side by side in a campaign, you can unify that by doing some type of field signs uh, on your armor here and there to signify that, which is kind of cool. And of course, we have a nice little classic picture there. And that is the Signum Astartes, the 
uniforms and regalia of the Space Marines. This is pre fifth edition, pre Primaris. This is 2002, right? So we're looking at kind of a snapshot of Space Marine lore and markings from this time. Not that things have changed drastically, but uh, there are some changes here and there, but it's still a worthwhile looking into. I know I kind of just thumbed through and pointed things out, but it's a big book in terms of page size and everything else. But here you can see I'll bring some stuff closer. We have the Iron Skull Award, the Marksman's Honor. We have, of course, the, the Machina Opus, the Crux Terminatus, the Prime Helix. We know Purity Seals and uh, Skull and motto stuff we've known in, and of course the laurel imperial laurel and everything else so there's your iron halo and there is your the imperialis symbol right there so just a nice blending of showcasing what they look like giving you some lore in them if you're somebody who can do freehand well you could knock these out and maybe the personal transport of a character or whatever else and it's just a nice uh bit of information to have plus if you're looking for some chapter inspiration, you know, they have a nice uh, selection of codex chapters as well. Anyways, with all that said, pretty cool book. When I first saw it, I'm like, yeah, I gotta get this. This is really cool. I like symbology and regalia and stuff like that. So this is handled as if we're looking at a real military force. So I like that. It's not just, hey, this is how you paint it. Really no painting to be had here, but just lore and information that can definitely be applied to your space marines. Nothing about the Dark Angel stuff or the Blood Angel stuff or the Space Wolves because they are not Codex compliant enough to be here. And the Space Wolves aren't at all, right? But anyways, really cool. I know every time Ultramarines are the focus, people tend to roll their eyes, but they are always a good example of going over Codex compliant stuff and that's why we see it. If you happen to have this yourself, what do you think about it? Do you still have it? Do you still know where it is? Do you look at it? I like to look at it every so often. It's a fun little read-through. It's a fun thing to just check out the pictures and, and read about the chapters and some of the uh, some of the honor markings or whatever else. In any case, thanks very much for stopping by. This is it for the Insignum of Startase. Is it worth getting? It depends on how much you're willing to spend, right? Because it hasn't been in print for a while, people will go, well, I can jack the price up a bunch. When in reality, when it first came out, this was 30 bucks US. So uh, if you're a collector, then there's more value in having it as part of your collection, but it's by no means a necessity. It's just a really nice thing to have. With that said, share your thoughts. Thanks very much for stopping by. And until next time, take it easy.